Hello, welcome. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, February 12, 2014. We welcome you today. Uh, we welcome you today, our guest, Alderman George Caldenas of the 12th Ward. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum today, Alderman. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. And I am Freddy Calixto, one of the board members here at CAN TV. This is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service uh, by CAN TV. We welcome your questions and comments. Uh, with the alderman here, you can call the number on your screen, 312-738-1060. Sure. D during the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many questions in as possible. So, alderman, let's start uh, talking about topics that are happening in the ward. And uh, the first thing, uh, you had an immigration reform press conference recently. Can you talk a little um, bit about yeah, that? Yeah, it was actually more geared towards uh, uh, a byproduct of, of lack of immigration reform. Mm -hmm. And I want to probably educate uh, the viewers about uh, some of the things that I was talking about. Uh, as a, ref a result of lack of immigration reform, uh, deportations are now leading to a great number of kids ending up in foster care uh, because when they detain parents, the mother and the father, uh, there's no one to care for the child uh, when that happens, and they're immediately taken into custody uh, and uh, either uh, held um, there for a while, while the kid, um, you know, we look for a family member or somebody who's going to be able to take care of the child. And sometimes there's no other option except foster care. So oh, wow. imagine, imagine that we're destroying a family, someone that was working, someone that owned the home, uh, that was not causing any crime, that was not causing anything uh, of damage to, to the community or, or, or our citizens. And now we have a situation where now we're paying for somebody to be in custody when we didn't have to. Uh, and obviously the cost is pretty, pretty extensive. And as well as other uh, social services that need to be provided to the family member or the child is left behind. So we're adding uh, more pain really than, than the solution that, we're, that we are uh, trying to find. What we need to do is recognize what happened years ago uh, when lax immigration laws led to, to people immigrating to find jobs. And we need to really get a solution to say, if you've been here and, you, and you've not had a criminal past and a criminal history, we need to change uh, your status so that you can be a productive citizen like you have been and, and keep that going. Instead of destroying families and destroying neighborhoods, now you have an empty home, you have a, destroy, uh, a family destroyed, uh, and now we're paying more for a situation that, that really did not, to, did not to occur. So I think it's a little injustice that people need to be educated on, and I think it's enough. It's, it's just about time that we, that we took it to the next level and say, really, enough of that. Uh, let's protect families, protect children more, more importantly, because they'll be traumatized for life, and all of us will end up paying for, for some sort of psychological care later on, which really doesn't need to be. Wow. And so you're saying some of these children end up in foster care? That is correct. Oh, my God. That is correct. And in thousands now. It's in the thousands. Um, 660,000 families now, one single parent with one child left behind to care for themselves. And it's really just inhumane. It's just really an atrocity that's occurring in this country. Uh, it takes me back to the days of concentration camps where, where you know, you took people into custody because they, they, they were the enemy. Uh, these folks are not the enemy. These are people that are they're, they're, they're look, were looking for, for work to better themselves. And, and this is the, the land of opportunity, and I, I still believe that. Well, we have a caller on the line. Caller, your question, please. Sí, buenas tardes. Me da mucho gusto escuchar el tema del que está hablando de los niños que son inmigrantes y los están deportando, y me da mucho gusto que está haciendo usted algo por eso. Um, más o menos, ¿qué es lo que es, están haciendo ahorita en el momento? Lo que vamos a, a hacer con, con la organización de MALDEF, que es la, es la Mexican American Legal Defense Fund, son, son abogados, vamos a tratar de uh, hacer una, eh, a demandar a uh, lo que es los Estados Unidos, el gobierno en sí, con derechos civiles, vamos a tratar de, de encontrar la manera de parar esas deportaciones, de veras, llegarlas a atención, eh, eh, de cuestión de humana, de ser inhumano en lo que está pasando. Los, esos niños deben ser protegidos. Eh, no perseguidos. Uh, eh, sí, lo estamos haciendo de manera eh, fuerte con otras organizaciones, pero eh, es tiempo que hagamos algo. Gracias por su, por su pregunta. We have another question here from a caller that uh, if I have a criminal background but need help with my citizenship, what should I be, what should be my first step? 
Um, the first step is that you should, uh, first of all, get as much information on it. And uh, without calling an attorney right away, you should Google everything or do a search uh, engine on someone with a criminal past. It has steps for you to what level of, uh, if it's a misdemeanor, if it's a felony, what are your steps and what are your chances of getting a reprieve? And also, you can also appeal it, and, 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 and you, you will need an attorney to follow the appeal process for you and, and maybe try to get some relief. Uh, the governor is signing some uh, forbearances, or, or, or I guess, um, as the governor calls it, pardons, to, to, to people that did felonies many years ago and the fact that they were not good citizens. So you can also petition the governor for a pardon if you committed a state felony. If you committed a federal felony, that's a different than the, than the president has to pardon you, and that's a long shot. But uh, the state, uh, you, you, could, uh, you have some options. Right. They can call your office for some of this They can call the well? office. They can uh, definitely uh, call uh, uh, Attorney General. They can call different people to help to get some help. The, this is the uh, information for the Alderman's office. You might want to call that number if you need more help on that. Uh, thank you. We have another caller. Caller, what is your question? Hi, uh, um, I saw that recently the City Council voted to approve, was it $1.9 billion in, in new uh, was it bond issuing and stuff like that? And, and there wasn't really any debate on the floor. I'm, I'm just kind of curious if, if why it passed so easily and um, how you feel about having to I mean, borrow that much money to pay off the old debts and you know, sort of um, is our key in the can down the road or how are we going to address this problem? Uh, it's a good question. I think the fact that we owe money that we are in debt, uh, it's, not, it's not a secret. And part of the, the debt is, uh, is accumulated over, uh, over a decade of structural deficits in this, in this city. We've got to pay for services, uh, lawsuits, and, and, and there's other uh, uh, issues that are, that are coming into the city. Um, we refinance part of the debt, and then we issue new debt. And refinancing part of that is just basically maybe getting a rate uh, decrease in your interest. It's just like sometimes uh, you have a credit card debt and you and you want to then revolve it or put it into another credit card that has a lower payment or lower interest rate, which a lot of people do that. You know you have the debt. You just have to kind of manage it and so that you're paying less. That's one option. That's one thing. The other, the other one that you're talking about is giving ourselves some liquidity uh, and having some, some cash on hand for unforeseen circumstances. One of the things that is looming is the pension crisis. But I'll give you an example. If there's no pension reform and we do not get some help from Springfield to be able to uh, spread uh, sort of the pension payments over, over time, we have to pay uh, by law 600, uh, approximately $600 million into the pension system. That would literally bankrupt the system or we wouldn't have enough cash to be able to pay that and also operate the city. So worst case scenario, we give ourselves a little bit of a cushion. I think that, that we would spook the markets if we had no liquidity to be able to pay something that, that comes due at, at that particular moment. It, you know, we're hopeful that uh, Springfield will help the city of Chicago to avoid this situation or this crisis, but we cannot put ourselves in a situation of a crisis um, you know, without acting. And this is a good way for the mayor to act and to have a little bit of a cushion just in case something uh, catastrophic would happen and the city would not end up in default or end up in bankruptcy. Thank you, caller, for that question. Uh, Alderman, uh, this is, seems like this winter is a little bit different than the winters we've had uh, in the last few years. How is the 12th Ward handling all the snow and all this cold weather in, the, uh, in this winter? Well, it's been tough. I mean, people are obviously reading. Uh, 35 years has been the last time since it's been this cold and it's been this, this much snow. So we are making do. Obviously, we, we're still cleaning the streets. We are, are, are shoveling now, even our my office, helping people and seniors shovel the, the sidewalks and, and taking extra care uh, to salt some of the, some of the streets so that uh, it helps uh, residents sort of cope with, uh, with the onslaught of snow. Um, it is uh, unfortunate. I mean, it just happens uh, with storms and happens with unforeseen circumstances where the pet weather changes and we just have to adapt. We're expending a lot more money than we uh, uh, have in previous years. I again, it's 35 years. It's almost like the 100-year flood. Uh, it, it happens every 100 years, so necessarily you kind of, how do you plan for that? Um, but, you know, I think the city is doing 
what he can to uh, uh, abate that the problem. And yeah, keep up with the rest of the services, pick up the garbage, take the graffiti down, uh, make sure that the other services are still being, uh, are being uh, done throughout the city. It's a challenge, but I think the city has to meet that challenge, uh, even in budgetary uh, constraints in these times. Yeah. And I know with the snow in the south, the uh, potholes come. So you guys have and then, and then the you have and then you have the puddles because yeah. the plows when yeah. they plow of course the, some of the asphalt uh, sometimes races because of, of the of the weather uh, the cold uh, makes the uh, you know the uh, the asphalt uh, wrinkle it's like your your skin right you know and put it in the cold and and in the, in the warmth and then you see how it changes it's the same thing happens in the in the asphalt and unfortunately the plow hits it and then it rips the the concrete or the asphalt and now you have a pothole. So, but uh, yeah, there's something else that we, we are constantly uh, repairing and making sure that the potholes don't damage the cars. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, let's talk about a park. You got a park, a new park in the 12th district? Well, we, 12th, we're, 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 well, we're building a, a little village, just a, a, a new park, and this is spring, and we've been talking about this for years. We've been planning on this for 10 years. And finally, uh, we're gonna spend approximately $20 million for a new park. Uh, the second phase of that obviously would be a fuel house, but the first is to, uh, have the fields, uh, the um, as well as the basketball courts, the tennis courts, and and have the softball fields and the, and the the soccer fields as well as the baseball diamond, so so people can play uh, and have a park where they can feel free and, and exercise. Where's where's the this park? is uh, on thirty uh, first in Cadsey, uh, well thirty first in Albany basically. Great. So uh, this summer it should be uh, you should stop by and. Enjoy the new park. Take the uh, 31st Street bus to get there. Great. Well, looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another call on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I was hoping to get additional clarity on some legislation that I heard was recently proposed by Alderman Burke, which had to do with the banning of horse-drawn carriages in Chicago. Um, I think it's a wonderful like tradition, but I've been told that the city has received complaints from PETA, and the alderman feels that the tradition is antiquated. And I just wanted to get uh, Alderman Cardenas' thoughts on, one, whether or not we should continue to having the carriages, and two, like how he feels about just the legislation in general. Well, um, sometimes I'm, I'm a little antiquated uh, with some of the things that, that I like to see and, and I hate to lose uh, a carriage ride, uh, you know, in, in a city such as big as ours in a metropolis. Um, sometimes it's the little things and, you know, it, it just a throwback to a bygone era, but, um, I like to believe that, um, you know, you should still enjoy that romantic evening in a, you know, in a carriage ride if you choose to do that. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, set it to, to be a specific grid, uh, to be able to appease everyone. Um, uh, to me... Um, you know, I, I think that some folks enjoy it. Uh, it is part of our, 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 you know, tourist attraction as well. And um, I don't know, I, I would love to keep it. It is up to the alderman from that, from that ward uh, to see how he can make that work. But to me, it, it's a tourist attraction. I wouldn't mind keeping it. But again, I'm one vote. Thank you, caller, for that question. Now, we have another call on the line. What is your question, caller? Yes, good evening. Um, question on charter schools. I just want to see, Alderman, what is your position on the charter schools? I know last year that we closed uh, 50 schools in the, in the city of Chicago, but then just last month, uh, CPS voted to open seven charter schools. So what is your position? Well, uh, you know, it is a good, great question, by the way. And I always said that I wasn't against charter schools. Uh, I'm not a proponent of charter schools. I'm a proponent of having options for communities, especially when you're overcrowded. I hate to see children and modules being taught. Uh, and once that's alleviated, and I think that uh, in my particular community that has been the case, that uh, you lose that, that um, uh, excuse, if you will, to, to say you would need more charters. Uh, I'd like to see more CPS schools, of course, uh, and maybe it's an opportunity to sort of build more. Um, it depends on the community needs, and that's something that has to be discussed in the community and see what they decide. It could be done through maybe referendums or just uh, just having an, a, a you know a, a, a public discourse about it. Um, I did allow a, a charter school in, in my, my community based on on uh, the years, the past years' needs of, of additional 
uh, you know, a student population. And, and recently I, I said no to a, a be the change, if you will, uh, that was uh, proposed in McKinley Park because really McKinley Park is not overcrowded. And we know that it's not overcrowded. So it's, it, it has to make sense. Uh, it always has to make sense. You can't just uh, uh, approve something because you are, uh, you know, exacting policy for whatever reason that may be. To me, it has to make sense for the community needs and only the community needs. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Uh, just to remind you, you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV, and I am Freddy Calixto, one of the board members, with my guest Alderman Caldenas from the uh, 12th Ward. What what other topics can, do we, we want to talk about that's happening in the 12th Ward, Alderman? Do you have uh, anything else that's going on? Uh, well, what I about think your internship program. You know what? It, it's a great I, a segue to it. Uh, one of the things that I'm proud of nowadays is is that I'm mentoring a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of young uh, uh, students. Uh, I'm having uh, a monthly lunches with uh, business people, introducing them uh, to a network of, of different executives and showing them that they can be successful. Uh, we will be taking Farragut students, uh, Kelly High School students, mm -hmm. and uh, Community Links High School students, and communities from 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 the area. Uh, students from the area, and we're going to have these these lunches every month, uh, and different students every month, so they can really see uh, live a discussion uh, of their future. Uh, bankers, uh, we can have entrepreneurs, we can have people in the marketing and the legal profession, and these I want these students to kind of see uh, themselves in, in future years, sort of looking yourself in the mirror, uh, but in the future. Um, helping them uh, attain skills, uh, just be confident in themselves, speak in public, uh, and also feel uh, like there's su a support system for them um, with with a, a network like like uh, the people that I'm that I'm talking about. Like they feel they can call somebody if they have questions about a particular career, uh, or the questions um, on on what they should do and how they should prepare. How, how should they dress? Uh, what some of the things that that uh, you know that we've learned uh, over the years in our experience, and how do how do we give that experience back to them so they can take advantage of it? Great. So this internship is for high school students. Do you have something for the college students? These are for high school and college students. Okay. These are both. Um, we want to be able to afford uh, having the opportunity for both the high schools that are there in, in junior and senior years and also the college students. So they have a, obviously a clear path so when they graduate, they can always have a, a connection to a potential uh, a job offer. Awesome. Great. Uh, what, other, what other things are happening in the ward? Well, we encourage uh, recycling. Uh, of course, it's right now it's winter, and, and, and a lot of people are not paying attention to it. But, you know, spring comes right away. Uh, I still encourage you to recycle and separate uh, the plastic and, and separate the paper from the, um, from the regular garbage so that it's not mixed. Uh, teach the children how to do that. And we, if we start kind of doing that, uh, we build a culture where uh, you know kids learn how to save the planet and how to how to be more ecologically friendly in their communities. Um, you know, there's uh, there's there's that topic. I, I, I encourage kids to also uh, come to my office and learn how to help others uh, in public service. How to help them fill out a form. How to help them uh, apply for a social security card. How to apply for for aid. How to apply for all the different programs that are out there whether a state, federal, or city, these kids learn how to help their, their, their community. Awesome. So on the recycling uh, topic, you have the blue garbage cans already set up? The, throughout the yeah, the, the blue cards should be uh, in every household. If they're not, then make sure you, you do have it. If not, call the office at that number so that uh, you, get a, you get a card. And if you need a, gar a card, just a regular card, also call the office. Make sure you do have one so the trash is not on the street. Or on the ground. Then here's the information for the alderman's office. And we have another question here from another caller, alderman. Alderman, what are some recent and noticeable ordinances that you proposed? Well, we are we proposed uh, the obviously the uh, immigration. We proposed a resolution on, on, on immigration. 
We also proposed and proposed uh, uh, to look at energy drinks not, not long ago, and that's to regulate the consumption for, uh, for teenagers that they're being affected by the amount of caffeine. So that's, that's another one. We're going to propose an ordinance, uh, I believe this month, that looks at potentially banning uh, plastic bags, uh, and that is also ecologically friendly, and, and to, to have uh, that opportunity to kind of debate whether this is a good issue uh, or whether it's a good decision or not. Um, there's been ordinances uh, to look at uh, obesity and how to counter obesity with uh, soda companies and how to help them also uh, put more in education uh, and also in schools, money for education in schools so that kids learn about obesity and to, and to lessen their consumption of, of soda. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for that uh, question, caller. Uh, what else do we have in the 12th Ward that's going on? I, I looked at... Uh, well, we have the health fairs, and, health and people fairs. Should, should go to the website. Um, it's 12th Ward Chicago, and if you can put it up. In our website, we have a calendar of events, and we have uh, a bike to Boulevard that's in June, and we have the health fairs that uh, uh, start as late, uh, late uh, I believe, late July uh, through September and August and November. And all these health fairs, really, they offer the, the community an opportunity uh, to get uh, free immunizations, to, to help, you know, check themselves, to see a doctor, perhaps. Uh, things sometimes we take for granted, but um, some people shouldn't, especially when they're diabetic, uh, when they have hypertension, always be checking yourself so that, that you don't end up uh, in the hospital. The Bike the Boulevard, can you talk a little bit about that? What, what exactly well, the Bike is that? the Boulevard, I started many years ago. Uh, when I first uh, got elected, uh, I like to see children uh, being, uh, you know, healthy and, and doing healthy activities. So I decided to get the community involved and donate bicycles to kids every year. And I think we donate, uh, we have donated uh, really over 200 bicycles, uh, probably more, 40 bicycles a year, uh, and that goes to the kids in the community so that they can ride around in the summertime and be and, and stay healthy. Well, we have another question from another caller here. Uh, the question is, would you like to be partnering with business? Uh, you would, would like to be, be interested in partnering with business leaders who want to help fight against violence, like Get in Chicago or similar programs? Well, I mean, sure, that, that's something sometimes that gets overlooked. Uh, violence should not be accepted in any environment, family, uh, friends, uh, or otherwise. Uh, it is something serious that happens in our communities too often. It, it leads to serious consequences, and they should obviously try to seek help and, and seek treatment. And anything that I can do in my office can do to help alleviate that situation. And I have many organizations that are also get funding uh, to help uh, uh, abuse women or, or shelters and, and how to get help. So, yeah, sure, that, that's something that uh, we all should be working towards as a community to lessen violence in our communities. And you are working with a lot of the nonprofit community organizations in your work. Yeah, some have specific issues. funding, so we, we work with them directly because the funding just is targeted for uh, violence prevention, as, as the caller mentioned. So, you know, San Jose Mission and, and 24th and Albany is one of them. Uh, there are others, of course, but, uh, you know, they, they get funding and, and they can also increase their funding if they also find additional programs that can help ameliorate the problem, whatever problem that may, that may be occurring uh, from violence prevention. Sometimes the, 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 the people, even the gentlemen, also need help and psychological help, and sometimes uh, substance abuse leads to that. So we should be able to... Uh, meet those folks and so they can they get the proper help from not just uh, violence prevention but also from substance abuse. Right. Well, our time is running out. Uh, we have just a, a half a minute left, I believe. Uh, Alderman, thank you very much for being on the show today. And well, thank, I, thank you, and I, I hope this helps the community sort of see what's going on. Uh, again, always, always Google and go to the websites to see what's happening in the calendar of events as we upload new information. Follow me at Twitter, uh, at George A. Cardenas. Uh, you will find me on Facebook. Uh, please share your thoughts. Be respectful, of course, and I will get back to you. Uh, but let's have good discourse so we can improve 
not just our communities, but this city that we love so much. Thank you so much. Uh,